place. If you guys can hear me, clap three times. If you guys can hear me, quiet down. All right, awesome. So basically this last question is pretty tough and it uses an idea called combinatorics. Okay, if I want to represent this idea, I'll need to have a volunteer. Anyone want to volunteer? I have a question. No, I don't want to do this. Nope. Okay, let's see. How many people have their hands raised? Like, let's say three people have their hands raised. So how many ways can I choose a volunteer? By luck. Or like how many different volunteers can I choose? If there are three. Hands there are three. There, exactly, three. if there's only three people, that means I can only choose three volunteers. So let's see, how, let's pretend there's like five people, okay? Let's pretend you guys are more enthusiastic and five of you guys put your hands up. Now what happens if I ask for two volunteers? How many different ways can I choose two volunteers? Two ways. Ten. 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 How did you guys get ten? Okay, I mean, yeah, probably six. But basically, so a lot of people, you guys are pretty quick. And you guys said that if there were five volunteers and I wanted to choose two of them, then I have ten ways of doing that. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, I can start off by choosing one person, and then I can choose a second person. And since I've already chosen one person, there's only four people left. So that means there's only four other people I can choose from. But now the thing is, why every pair of people get counted twice, right? Like, say for example, um, Alice gets chosen the first time, and Bob gets chosen the second, second one. That's the same thing as if Bob was chosen the first one, and Alice was chosen the second one. So, since every, each of them gets counted twice, we just take this number and we divide by two. So that means in total there are ten ways to choose two volunteers if there are five of you guys who volunteer. And how we write this is uh, we use this notation like this. We say we use five, choose two. So out of five people, we choose two of them. And how many ways can we do that? Alright, so you might be wondering how, what does it have to do with the last problem, right? So, bear with me for a second. This is a little bit tricky, but um, can I grab your guys' attention? Oh, wait, do you have a question? So, okay, so first of all, if there are five people who want to volunteer, I can start off by choosing one person. That, I have five different people I can choose from, right? So I take that one person with me, and now there's four people left. And I can choose another one of them, so there's four people. Yeah, exactly. And then, since I'm counting each pair twice, I divide by two. Okay, we're running a little bit short on time, so if you guys can give me your attention, we'll be done really quick. Okay, so basically, this is called five choose two. So if I have five people and I want to choose two of them, that this is how many ways I have to do that. So now you might be wondering, what does this have to do with the question? Let's think about it this way. If we have the sum of all of these five numbers is equal to 25, we can think of each like sort of one as a ball, okay? And we have 25 of these balls in total because all of them add up to 25, right? And basically what we're saying is now, we want to figure out how we can put these balls into five different containers because that's the number of ways we can sort these, we can make such five numbers in total, right? Does that kind of make sense? If we have 25 balls, each of these is like one, for example, and we put them into five different boxes, and each of these boxes is one of the variables. So, for example, we have a box A, we have a box B, etc. I have a box E. So one, two, three, or five boxes, and we want to put these 25 balls into these five boxes. How many ways can we do that? Um, okay, one thing you might be wondering is I might be getting a bit ahead of myself because what I'm missing is that box A needs to have at least one ball, and box B needs to have at least two balls, right? So how do I sort of put them in the, there that way? What I can do is I can actually just start off with one ball in box A, two balls in box B, and then all the way up to five balls in box B. And that way, how many balls do we have left? If we if we have 25 balls total, and then we just minus three, minus four, minus five, do you guys see where I'm getting this from? Because box one has one ball, so we take off one, and then all the way up to box E has five balls, so we take off five. This is 15, I think. And then we're left with 10 balls that we want to sort among these five boxes. So one way we can do this is we can just stick dividers between these balls. And then we have four of these dividers. Seriously, okay. We have four of these 
dividers. And you guys see how these four dividers break up the remaining ten balls? And if we have four dividers, do you see how this breaks up the remaining ten balls into five boxes? So for example, we have this chunk is box A, this chunk is box B, this chunk is box C, this chunk is box D, and this chunk is box E. So now, we'll, now this is a, a bit of a leap. Let's say, um, this it's a bit easier to think of this way. I know this might be a little bit like far ahead of you guys, this is something you probably won't learn in school until maybe grade 10 or 11, but bear with me. So now we have 10 balls, we have four dividers, and now basically the question is, how many different ways can we arrange these balls and dividers? So we have in total 14 different places we can put the balls and dividers, right? Because we have 10 balls, four dividers, so 14 places in total. And we want to choose four of them to place the dividers in. So our final answer is as simple as 14 choose 4. Isn't that pretty cool? Okay, I'll show you guys how to calculate the, uh, let me see, do I have enough time? Okay. This might be a little bit tough to explain So let's, let's think about it this way. If you guys had these 14 positions and you had to choose four places to put these dividers, how would you do it? Put it in between the balls. Uh, how would you guys do it? Think about what I did earlier with the volunteers. So say I have five volunteers and I want to choose two of them. How do I start? Exactly. I start with by simply choosing one of these positions to be my first uh, divider. And how many ways can I do that if there are 14 positions in total? Do you have to number the balls? I, I have 14, right? I have 14 different places. I can stick the first divider. And now there's only 13 positions left. So for the second divider, I only have 13. And for the third divider, I only have 12 left. And for the fourth divider, I only have 11. Now, like what we did earlier, the problem is we're counting all of these sets of the dividers a number of different times. Okay, this is a little bit tricky. And you might be asking, how many times is each one getting counted? Like for example, if I put the first divider here, and I put the second divider here, I put the third divider here, and then I put the fourth divider here, all of these dividers are the same, right? So that's the same as if I put the first divider here, and the second divider here, and the third divider here, and the fourth divider here. You guys see how the dividers are in the same places? So now the question is, how many times is each of these sets being counted? And this is a little bit, um, this is another concept you might see in all of your math contests, and it's the idea of permutations. How many ways can you arrange these things? So if you have four objects, I'll introduce some new notation to you guys. Basically, we just put them in order. So for the first one, we have four different ways of choosing it. For the second number, we have three remaining ones. For the third one, we have two remaining ones. And for the last one, there's only one last position you can go with. So our final answer is just four times two times three times one. So that means, that means we just take this value and we divide by four times three times two times one. Because out of these, these are like all the possible sets, right? Of if we're, we want to stick the dividers in four different positions. And then, however, all of these sets, since the dividers are all the same, we're over counting. We're counting each set multiple times. So if we want to get rid of those extra ones, we just divide by the number of times that each set is being counted. And as we showed earlier, there's four times three times two times one ways to count the same set. So then we divide by four times three times two times one, and that's going to be our final answer. If you evaluate that, you'll get something like the number. Um, I didn't get the actual number, but anyways. Um, anyways, if you evaluate this out, that'll give you your final answer. I'll just do it real quick. So, uh, 7 times 3 times 11. Quick math time. So that means that you should get 1001 as your final answer. And that's your answer to question five. All right, that's it for my talk today. Thank you so much for coming. Um, if you guys want to keep in touch, come, like talk to me later. I'll write my email while I'm bored. All right, besides that, thanks all for coming. Have a great day.